We're going to give uh, Lucas Brunel a call, who uh, has okay. uh, produced a film that will be available July 1st. The film is called Line of Sight, and it is all about these crazy alley cat races in New York right. City. We're going to call Lucas and uh, get him to tell us more about it. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. Good. Okay. We can't wait to see the film when it comes out on July 1st. 20 countries, 30 cities. Uh, yep. What was the absolute worst place that you were riding in? When you're in the city, the people that are in the city and that are qualified to drive there know what to expect and how to handle themselves. So I'd say the worst is suburbs of here, suburbs of other countries. In particular, um, Germany was pretty difficult. You mentioned that we were so excited about uh, seeing the films. There are also, looking at your website, there's also a few people that aren't so excited. And uh, reading from your website on the haters page, I just want to quote a few lines. I can't even describe how much that guy pisses me off. He's part of the reason that people think bikes shouldn't be allowed on the roads. Thanks for making it hard for everyone else to commute, get groceries, and go to school by bike, asshole. Douchey, douchey, douche, douche, douche. I'll read one more. Um, Brunel, you are a self-righteous, vainglorious, smarmy little shit stain. Your whole selfish, entitled shtick is full of holes, but you're so caught up in yourself that you can't see how your actions affect others. When you finally buy it, your eulogy won't be, we admired how he lived his life on his own terms. It'll be, we told him so, but he was all about himself. Where does all this vitriol come from? A lot of these people that do that would want to do this. Why does this piss people off? So much. I mean, in, in the most unbelievable way. Even when I do maneuvers on club rides that are kind of like cyclocross or curb jumping or whatever, people get, other riders get so completely outraged. It's unbelievable. I also think um, it comes from people's upbringing where, you know, there are certain, there's a lot of rules and regulations and insurance and all this other stuff in society. Just reading some of the comments too, it seems like people are suggesting that uh, this kind of riding is dangerous, not just to the rider, but to the pedestrians and the drivers, and that you're promoting this kind of rider, which seems to me like it's, it's calling a war correspondent responsible for starting the war. If you ask uh, the police, and I've spoken to the police about this, what an alley cat is, um, the police are not going to know. You know, if you ask them, you know, what gum, gumball rally is or something like that with the cars, they're going to know right offhand. But uh, police don't know what an alley cat is because alley cats are not what cause um, the fatalities and head injuries and all the stuff that goes on out there. And tell me quickly, what is an alley cat race? Sure. Um, what it is, is it's typically an hour in length, and it's um, six, maybe eight checkpoints, and you just go to those checkpoints as fast as you can. It's on open street uh, with open traffic, so it's not a closed course. And so, you know, it simulates a messenger manifest, which is something that they use to get to um, pickups and drop-offs as quick as possible. And it, it looks to me like it, it does involve the, you know, riding the wrong way down one-way streets. It involves anything and everything. If you grab onto a car, you know, on the highway to sketch and to get there faster or go on a median or you go over a frozen river, who cares? I mean, whatever, you know, you do, um, as long as you're not hurting anyone, um, you're there, you know. So uh, one of the things about other cat races is if somebody does crash or if they run into a pedestrian or whatever, um, that is very serious and, you know, whatever win they might have, they won't because that's, that's taken very seriously. We're kind of self-regulating. Yeah, I've got a quick question for you. Um, how, many, how many riders are in these races and what kind of numbers have you got uh, taking part worldwide? Riders range from, you know, maybe 15 or 20, if, you know, on a summer weekend, you know, Denver is putting on an alley cat or some small town up to um, hundreds of riders. And one thing I'll add about the alley cats, too, is that uh, there are all these checkpoints that are really creative. I mean, there's, you know, everything ranging from kissing a dog, to getting hit by a frying pan, to building something out of legs. I mean, you name it, it, it there's, there's 
endless possibilities. Of, they're kind of underground. It, it's pretty funny, like, how frustrated some of the media is when they come to me. And, you know, they say, you know, I cannot get to make heads or tails of what you guys are doing and when. And who, who typically competes? Uh, messengers and ex-messengers and urban riders. Um, and then you get people in there, you know, they'll have maybe, you know, dad will be in there trying to compete, or their son, or um, roadies might, you know, try to come along, you know, and, and, and try and do this. It's pretty funny. Uh, so and in the big rides, is there prize money, or is there any uh, awards? Um, there are sponsors for these, and, you know, Adidas, Puma, Red Bull, you know, they kick down, uh, you know, money and swag and all kinds of stuff. The prize money ranges from... Uh, you know, tires and handle bars, socks, T-shirts, all that stuff, uh, uh, frames, rims, hundreds of dollars, plane tickets to wherever, to the next event. I, I would personally just do it to kiss a dog. <laughs> that would be my sole motivation, and I'd be happy. So, Can I ask you um, what your motivation for making the film? It's taken you 10 years. I saw a friend of mine, a critical mass, using a shoulder-mounted camera, and the shoulder-mounted camera was recording his riding. And, you know, at the time I was messengering and I was doing alley cats once in a while on the weekends. And immediately when I saw that picture and play it back, it was on high eight. It was, you know, old camera. But I said, I have got to get what we do on video because people are going to love this and it's the way to ride. I also read on your uh, website that you had a, a very troubled youth. You were a cat burglar. Let me, can, let me I've got another <laughs> quote I want to I read here from your uh, website. I was living the kind of childhood that produces psychopaths and career criminals, but something would help turn that energy towards more noble pursu pursuits. What was that something? That something was bike riding. Riding my bike saved my life, literally, because had it not been for that, um, you know, I would have continued down the path that actually many of the friends that I had um, are dead now. I, I've had, I had more funerals by the time I was 20 than I could imagine. So, Did they ever uh, diagnose you in the mental institution? Why were you there? Uh, I was there because of a bunch of stunts that I pulled. I rode my um, Honda CR 250R uh, motorbike down the hallway of the high school, and I um, drove stolen cars to high school, and I, you know, took to getting arrested in front of everybody in front, in, 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 you know, in the high school. So uh, I did all kinds of stuff, and they basically didn't know what to do with me, and that's what landed me in the loony bin. Wow. I just want to read one more quote from the website. Truth is, by night, I was a cat burglar, sometimes for hire for insurance scams. I still won races, and I did well, even while charges were brought against me for break-ins, some of which I didn't even do. <laughs> were there break-ins that you didn't get caught for? Oh, yeah. Hell, yeah. Well, there you go. Then it kind of balances out, eh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't think about that, but that's true. It kind of does. Have you lost any friends over this, either from, uh, you know, people not... For instance, for people that like keeping the sport underground and you're filming it and opening it to a wider audience? Not that I know of, you know, because, I mean, there are people out there that are just going to kind of, you know, leave your life and you're not really going to be aware of it, so unfortunately. But um, I, don't, I don't think so in the fact that I've had um, a positive effect on this, that I've, my videos um, make the ride, you know, create an, create an arena, create a um, view, you know, for these people, you know, for these, for these people's riding that never existed before, um, and they can, everybody can see that. So it is something that um, has definitely brought a lot of money and sponsors and, you know, a lot of attention um, to the... Um, to the sport. I mean, a lot of things to the sport that were not before. Well, Lucas, it's yours is truly an inspirational story, how you've uh, overcome some huge challenges in your life to, to come to where you're inspiring others and uh, making these beautiful films that uh, you're a self-taught filmmaker. Uh, we're running out of time here. I just want to uh, direct people to your website. It's hidden right here behind Dan Milner's head. <coughs> This is the website where you can buy the film on uh, July 1st, I believe. 
Yep, July 1st. And uh, wow, we really look forward to seeing it. And yeah. uh, there's just so much more to talk about. It seems like uh, you've, you've got so much more to tell. We look forward to talking to you again soon. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, thank you, Trey. And Come around for a cup of tea. Yeah, I will. And, uh, <laughs> and a ride, Dan. Yeah, hell absolutely. Yeah. Definitely. All right. Good luck, Lucas. Thanks a lot. Thank you.